Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're talking about cameras. So, self-filming is really growing in the hunting outdoor space right now, and a lot of states' uh, hunting seasons are rapidly approaching now. I know here in Tennessee, two weeks from tomorrow is the uh, archery velvet season, season that we have here. It's a private land hunt that we have. They've been doing it for a few years now. And I get a lot of questions from different people who are looking to get into self-filming. Um, I've been doing it now for, I guess, three or four years. Really, the first two years was just real basic and simple. Uh, since then, I've gotten more into it. I've been using DSLRs for photography now since my son was born. So I bought one 13 years ago. I've had one ever since then. I carry it with me all the time. I carry it all over the farm whenever I'm going out on my walks and doing things. I have it with me all the time. Well, today I'm going to go through the cameras that I use whenever I self-film. The next episode I'm going to do is going to go through the other equipment that I use, tripods, camera arms, uh, you know, different equipment like that. But today is focused primarily on the cameras and the equipment that's mounted on the camera itself. So the camera I've been using for the most part for the past two years, it's been my workhorse for all the videos on my channel, has been this Nikon D5200. So this camera actually records in 1080p 30 frames per second. It'll go to 1080p 24 as well, um, but the 30 frames per second is the highest uh, frame rate that it will do. Regardless of that, this camera is, I can't remember, it's five or six years old now, um, so it's an older generation. I actually bought it used. It takes outstanding video. If all you're wanting is regular 24 or 30 frame per second video, this thing is amazing. Um, it takes extremely high quality. When the, the program I use to edit and render my videos actually evaluates the quality of the video, and it rates the video coming out of this thing as you know far superior to a lot of other cameras that I've used in the past, and even like iPhone and things like that, you know, your cell phone cameras and things. This thing is fantastic. Plus, I love having it to be able to take the still photos with because I love getting those still photo captures to, to have for either personal use or Instagram or Facebook or whatever. So this has been the workhorse for me. The lens that's on this right now is a Sigma 18-50 to uh, f2.8 aperture uh, lens. With this camera and with this lens combination, I always carry a uh, circular polarizing filter because when I'm doing the landscape type stuff, when I'm out there in the fields and whatever, number one, I want this to be able to, I want to slow that shutter speed down there are cicadas all around me here. I don't know if you can hear them or not, but they've all of a sudden decided to participate in the video. But I like to carry the circular polarizer with me. It helps make my landscape videos and photos just have that extra pop to it. Plus, it'll also add a little bit of darkness to the, uh, to the image, so that way I can slow my shutter speed down if I'm in a really bright, well, or high, highly lit environment. Other than this lens, I have a 35mm f1.8. I love having this lens for low light conditions or if I'm in the tree stand, if I want to do my interviews in the tree stand because I can blur the background behind me. Now, with this being a fixed lens, it takes a, a, a prime lens. It takes amazingly crisp, clear photos and videos. More so than this, but the difference with this is because it's a zoom, I can either zoom out, get a wide view of the landscape or wherever I'm sitting hunting or whatever fishing, but then I can also zoom it into 50 millimeters and I can get a little bit more detail uh, in my images and videos. I have a 50 millimeter f1.8 as well, but it's on a different DSLR that I have in the house and I didn't want to go dig it out and bring it out here. It's a little too long of a, of, of a focal length for me to use in tree stands for any kind of uh, interviewing purposes, but I did use it this past December when I shot my 8 point. I was actually using it as my primary video lens because the reason is this thing, this lens weighs, this lens itself right here weighs about half of what this lens weighs. And then when you factor in that a lot of times I carry this 70 to 300 millimeter telephoto so I can really zoom in at distance on critters, uh, this thing weighs about three times as much as this lens does. So if I carry this lens with me and my 50 millimeter, if I'm going to walk a long ways and carry this gear in with me, with me I don't have a whole lot of weight there. Getting back to this lens, this is my 70 to 300 millimeter, and it has a variable aperture of 4.5 to 5.6. That said, I really can't use this lens in low light conditions. So early morning, dawn, and dusk time frame, the, this, this lens really does not allow enough light to get into it. 
to create a really good clear image unless I start trying to boost my ISO. And if you know much about cameras, uh, you know, the ISO is, is, is just another function that you have to adjust the lighting and the crispness clarity of your image that you're taking as well. But there is a limit there where you eventually increase the ISO so much where your video and image begin to get a little granular, grainy looking, and you try to avoid that if at all possible. But this lens here is fantastic for if I'm hunting over fields or whatever, I can really zoom in close and get really good close-ups of the deer, turkeys, squirrels, rabbits, whatever it is that's running around. This is an image stabilized lens. None of my other lenses that I have for my DSLR are image stabilized, so you gotta keep that in mind. You gotta be real careful. You can't be doing this, and you need to try to lock that camera into you or rest up against something or use a camera arm or tripod or whatever to get a really good stable image. You can't, I mean, you can't just hold it out here and use this. Anyone that's shot video or camera photos much, if you hold it out here and try to use this screen on the back a lot of times, you're never gonna be as stable with only two points of contact as when you pull this thing in and you lock it. And you lock it here against you like this, you're gonna be a lot more stable. But just a little bit something extra to think about there is your image stabilization features in your camera or in your lens. This lens has uh, image stabilization in it. It actually has a normal normal feature and a active feature. So I can actually zoom this thing in to the full 300 millimeter length, hand hold it, and get video of whatever it is. I actually videoed a flock of turkeys here yesterday evening at full 300 millimeter uh, zoom length, hand held, looking across my yard, and there was a, a smoky gray phase hen in the bunch. And I was able to do it, and the image is just very steady, very smooth. Image stabilization is really good. It adds a little bit of cost to your lenses, but that, that's how it goes. So as you can see, most of my talking here has to do with DSLRs so far anyway. I did used to use a handy cam style camcorder. Um, I didn't have enough control over it. You know, they, they usually run the $300 to $500 range for those. They take really good video. They take sucky photography. I like the photo aspect. That's why I like using this DSLR. What I am recording on this video on is my other camera. I just bought that camera. I mentioned this camera here is five or six years old and I bought it used and it still has been a workhorse for me. This past winter I found a Panasonic Lumix G7 on clearance, new in box, and I picked it up. And it can do 4K, uh, 30 frames per second, 24 frames per second. It can do 1080p in uh, 2430 and 60 I believe. I know it can do 60. Uh, I'm trying to think if they'll do 24 or not. They kind of dropped the 24s out a lot of the lower resolutions. But that's that camera itself weighs about half as much as this camera as far as the body of the camera. So I think this one comes in around... I can, I'm not even going to throw out the weights. I can't remember. I can look it up maybe post it down below later. But um, the body itself weighs about half for that G7 as this Nikon D5200 does. Okay, you think, well, that's that's not a big deal. It is when you start talking about having to pack and walk your camera gear in, you know, one, two miles to get to wherever it is you're setting up to hunt. That begins to add up. Same thing, the lens that this is being recorded on is a 14 to 45, I think, is the range that the Panasonic lens is at. So that's comparable to this lens here, but that lens weighs less than half of this lens. So when you start looking at it, and I run that Panasonic lens, that Panasonic camera and lens combination versus this, um, that's a lot lighter package. Now, that being said, I don't really video in 4K normally. I don't like to render it to make such huge files. A lot of people, 4K TVs are becoming more common. A lot of your other tablets and things can, can somewhat play 4K. So I'm still doing the 1080p whenever I'm rendering and uploading videos to YouTube. But you may be a 4K person if you are then there's a lot of options out there now that'll do 4K to, to give it a look at. For that Panasonic, I picked up a zoom telephoto lens. This is a 45 to 150. It's not as long as this one. So this is a 70 to 300, which when you do the math and you convert that to 35 millimeter equivalent, that's a 105 to 450. And then this one is a 90 to 300 if you convert it to 35. There's all these conversion factors you have to know for the DSLRs and I forgot to mention that G7 is a uh, mirrorless DSLR so this one has anytime you turn it on and you click the shutter you hear click 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 
it makes it makes a audible sound from where that mirror inside it's flopping around back and forth. You don't have that with that camera. You can have actually silent photo video capture with that camera. So it's a little bit more stealthy. In my opinion, I still like using this camera and these lens combinations. These are premium lenses for the most part. They give a much more crisp, clear image. I still have more user friendliness with this big lens. I mean, this is or this big camera. I can get my hands on it. I can adjust things. Plus, part of it's familiarity. I've used this thing for years. That's new. I'm still trying to get familiar with it. But that leads into another point. Get familiar with your gear before you hit the woods this season. I walk around with my cameras all summer long, taking photos of stuff around the farm, in the garden, go on hikes, go on walks, whatever. Take it with you. Get familiar with it before you get into the woods because the last thing you want to be doing is sitting there with your camera on a tripod or a camera arm and you see this big buck coming towards you and you can't just instinctively reach over and manipulate shutter speed, aperture, ISO, white balance. You can't just instinctively reach over and maneuver and change those things. You have to be looking at it and you're trying to be stealthy while you're looking over there. Get familiar with your equipment before you hit the woods this year. Number one lesson I can tell you. Get familiar with your gear now before season starts. Okay? I run uh, external mics on my cameras. Uh, this this mic here is a Movo VXR10. Um, this is a couple years old. I looked at all your other Rode mics and all that. You know, they get extremely high ratings, but when I looked up the reviews online, these Movo, this Movo mic cost about a third of what the Rode mic did, and it actually had better uh, audio results, crispness and peaks and different things than the Rode did. This is a cardioid mic, which means it's going to focus on whatever's directly in front of you. It has a wind, uh, a dead cat on it to drown out the wind, knock the wind sound down. Now i got a military helicopter flying overhead, so everybody's just trying to get in on this video today. Hopefully it's not too distracting or disturbing for you. The mic I'm recording on right now is a Movo VXR10 Pro. So it's basically this mic, but the next generation of it. That's a super cardioid. So it actually takes the cone that it's recording, that this one was recording, let's say it's recording in a cone like this, that one actually narrows the cone down a little bit more. So the cicada that I'm hearing really loud right over here to my right, to your left basically, uh, you may not even hear it on there. I don't know. I don't have the audio feedback to know. I won't know until I go to edit this thing. But the way that mic is set up, it's only supposed to pick up the, it, it basically amplifies and picks up the audio directly in front of it, nothing behind it, and the stuff to the side to kind of get muted down a little bit. Something to think about, external mics are a huge improvement whenever you are shooting your own video out in the woods. In addition to these cameras, I do carry GoPros, so it's like they're going to land on top of me. They just keep getting louder and louder. Wow, I had to I had to stop the video on that. I mean, they literally came right overhead. I mean, it, it's there's a whole group of military. I, I don't know what's going on. Maybe drills. I don't know. Anyway, I also take uh, GoPros. So your POV, action cams, those sort of things. This is one I've had for several years. This is a GoPro Hero Session 4. So this is another one of those that shoots 1080p, 30... I think it was a 1080p, 24, 30, 60. Uh, non-image stabilized so this is one I like to have mounted on something solid and stable so I'll either mount it on a shooting rail or I'll mount it up in the tree overhead to give a, a second angle of basically looking at me and what I'm doing as I'm adjusting cameras and how I'm responding whenever I see animals coming in this is a GoPro Hero uh, GoPro is it still Go 7? I don't know if they call them Hero or not this is a GoPro 7 black so this does this will do 4k 24 and 30 I think and it will do 1080p in 24 30 60 120 and I think it may even do 240 so it'll do like super slow-mo I think I can't remember exactly but it also is image stabilized and it has uh, time lapse and hyper stabilization hyper smooth something like that so it's basically a time lapse image stabilized video feature so 
this has a lot of different uses i'll actually usually do my walk in with this because i can hold it out or i've got a shoulder strap that i can mount this into and just let it run and it will video whatever i'm doing if i'm fishing or whatever i've got a chest mount or a head mount and it will do all that and the image stabilization really works out very well for that these things weigh nothing the problem is if you're trying to video your hunt they're not very good for videoing your hunt because anything beyond like 20 yards the animal looks like it's like 60 yards away so you can have a deer coming into your turkey coming in at 20 yards and to the eye you you, you have you, you have certain you know uh, focal lengths with your eye and uh, view angles with your eye well this amplifies all of that makes everything look a lot wider but because of that it makes things at this particular distance look smaller so I don't like using these for my actual hunting videos because of that reason a lot of people do if you like it good keep doing it that's your thing I just don't like to do it for on my videos that's just my personal preference anyway that's basically my camera gear in a nutshell um, you know, if you have any questions, drop a comment, drop a question down there. You know, the next video in this session, I'm going to go through my camera arms, tripods. I may, if I can remember, I'll go through that backpack clip thing that I wear whenever I wear my, mount my GoPro on it, all of that. Um, you know, I hope you like this video. I ask that you hit that like and subscribe. It just lets me know, you know, that this is kind of the kind of content that you like, you want to see. Anyway, hope you enjoy. Uh, I'll get this video finished wrapped up and loaded and then i'll start working on the other one and uh, i think that'll be pretty pretty enjoyable there because it'll go through the other equipment that i use and i take with me so hope you have yourself a wonderful day uh, stay safe god bless take care